Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Miss K Chris. And today, what we're going to talk about on this video are the criteria that the recruiters are looking for in a cabin crew applicant. So if you're interested in that, just keep on watching. So today, we're going to talk about the different criteria that I have learned through experience are very important for recruiters. And also, I have mentioned it on my book, Ready for Takeoff. So if you haven't yet gotten a copy of my book, it's now available online through ebook. You could also order it online on my website, misscakeris.com, or you could also get it cash on delivery via Shopee app. My shop name is Miss K. Chris. So let's talk about the different criteria, And I want to start with the non-negotiables. Non-negotiables are the one that you see printed with the job ad or the one posted on the Facebook page of the airline that is hiring. That means those are things that cannot be banned or there, are no, there, there is really a strict rule that you have to be able to get that requirement to be able to apply for the job of a cabin crew. The first requirement is obviously the height. Usually in the Philippines, they will ask you to be at least five foot three in height. Or in the international scene, they will ask you to be at least 157 or 158 centimeters. And some airlines will ask you to do a reach test of 212 centimeters. So they will not require any height as long as you can reach 212 centimeters. And usually the people that can reach, that can reach 212 centimeters are around 5'2 to 5'3 anyways. So yeah, it only depends in your anatomy. If your hands are longer than your legs, then perhaps it could be possible. So those are the physical things. I'm gonna talk about four physical things today, which is the height, the weight, the medical fitness, and your grooming. So these are things that can be seen in you, okay? So that is why most people are thinking about flight attendants all about physical because when it comes to these requirements, airlines are really strict, but they're not all that. So don't worry about it. It's just the stepping stone for you to get in the door. So it's your first ticket to get into the recruitment. The next thing that I want to talk about is weight. Some airlines are very strict with weight, but they don't ask you to have a specific weight. What they want you to have is the ideal weight for your height. So some other call this as your BMI. So you have to calculate for your own BMI. I'm gonna make another video about BMI. If you want, let me know down in the comments or you could just Google BMI, how to calculate. And then you will figure out how to calculate for your own range of weight that is acceptable for your height. Some airlines like Saudi are very strict with this, but most other airlines are not. Like for example, PAL, PAL Express, they don't really check BMI or even Qatar Airways. So I'm just mentioning it because some airlines are really strict about it. And the third physical thing that is a criteria for judging, <laughs> I'm just kidding, is a criteria to become a cabin crew is your medical fitness. So the first thing that they will check with you is your height and weight for you to be able to get into the recruitment area. And then on the recruitment area, they're gonna do the interviews and all that tests. And then after all you pass that, you have to still pass the medical fitness. That means if you are asthmatic or perhaps you are anemic or you have scars in your lungs, you will never get an okay for medical tests when it comes to international scene. But you know, things can change in the domestic scene because I'm just talking about people who want uh, in the domestic and international because they have different standards. So don't get confused. In general, you have to pass the medical exam. It's just that it's more strict when it comes to international companies like for example, because of uh, country restrictions, like for example, the Middle East, you'll never be allowed to work there if there is found to be a scar in your lungs. So it's not the airline's policy, it's the country's policy or the whole Middle Eastern area's policy. So that is why. So yeah, that's the medical fitness. You have to be able to pass that, but they don't check that during the interview, after the interview. 
And the next thing I want to talk about is the grooming. You need to have the look and image of a flight attendant. So you have to make sure that your makeup is carefully applied, your hair is in a bun or down if you're applying for Air Asia, and that your clothes are well fitted and as well as well ironed. No, there's no wrinkles. You have to have a professional look about you. That's a requirement because if there and then in the interview you can't even present yourself well to the recruiter, how can you present yourself to the customers or the passengers of the airline, right? So they are also checking on that. The next thing that I want to talk about aside from the physical aspect is the skills aspects. Okay, so being a flight attendant, there's so many skills and uh, qualities that is nice to have and that is important. So today, I want to specify, I want to specify which skills are non-negotiable as well for the criteria of choosing a cabin crew for the airline. So these skills are the top, top, top skills that you really have to emphasize during your interview. First one is your team work. You have to be able to work in a team setting. Why? Because the work of a flight attendant is not a solo work. It's not something that you do in an office, in a chair and desk, but you have to really work with the captain, work with your co-crew, work with your supervisor. So work with the ground crew. So there's so many moving parts and you have to be able to, you know, survive in that kind of environment because that's your daily grind. That's your daily job. So teamwork is very important that the airlines actually test you on this specific skill in a, in a segment or in a stage of the recruitment. There is a stage called group discussions or group interviews, group activities. It's always there for cabin crew uh, recruitment. So you will know that it's a very important skill to have. They really assess you into that. They want to see how well you get along to people you just met on that day. Okay, and how, how fast you are able to build rapport with one another and to gain, to be friendly with one another and work with one another more importantly. Okay, so teamwork. The next skill that is non-negotiable is the customer service skill. For me, this is very important because as the face of the airline, you are the frontliner. You are the one representing the airline. You're the image of the airline. You have to be able to deal with customers who are hungry, thirsty, sad, tired, sleep deprived, and has no one to talk to but you, the representative, if they're frustrated. And you as the representative should not be able to add into the fire by making it worse but instead you should be able to calm that person down and that skill is called customer service skill so there you have it that's really important aside from teamwork the next skill that I want to talk about is being flexible you already know that flight attendant career is not an 8 to 5 job so you will have to be working sometimes at night sometimes in the morning also flexible in the sense that sometimes you are going to a cold place and the next thing you know you're gonna be cold going to the desert which is very very hot and then also flexible in a sense that your schedule might change just like that like five minutes before time they might call you the crew control might call you and say um we're gonna cancel this flight you're gonna have to go to this flight because um it's crew requirement won't get too technical here but the point is you really have to be a flexible person to be able to cope and to thrive in this career so that is why during the recruitment or selection phase it's one of the criteria that they are looking for the next thing that they're going to check is your confidence level so that is why they ask you to do a group presentation or an individual presentation they ask you to do a ramp exercise where you have to model back and forth in front of the judges or in front of the recruiters this is a test of confidence because they want to ensure that you are going to be someone who will be able to implement rules and regulations from the airlines policy to the customers and as well as carry yourself in front of a lot of people which will be looking at you once you are the flight attendant of a flight you're like the live show in the flight so every time you are passing through the aisle everyone's gonna take a look at you whether they like it or not because 
there's actually nothing else to look at inside the airplane aside from that small little window here <laughs> okay so and also perhaps you're going to be the bearer of very important news to the passenger that's why they will look at you maybe you're gonna be the bearer of the news that they're going to eat now or there's an emergency and they have to evacuate or there's going to be a delay or something like that so you have to be able to carry yourself with grace and poise and that is why we always say on the tips and the cabin crew interview that you always have to mind your poise make sure that your back is straight you're always smiling and you're always you know on point <laughs> okay so the next thing that is non-negotiable is your english skills i'm not talking about proper english sentence construction or something like that but communication english skills you should be able to have basic english skills that the people who are listening to you can understand what you're saying okay your accent should not be so heavy that it's so hard to understand you okay so this is a challenge for people who usually came from different countries and then because of miscommunication of poor English skills, so many accidents have happened or misunderstandings have happened. Good thing if it's only a misunderstanding, but what if it leads to an accident? Then that's a liability. So that is why they, they give you English tests during the cabin crew interview. So expect that during the day. The last but not least that I want to talk about, which is a criteria, a non-negotiable criteria for flight attendants or cabin crew, is the educational requirement. So, you need to have at least uh, finished high school to be able to apply for international airlines. Okay, now there is news. I saw a post on Facebook about Philippine Airlines accepting K-12 graduates. So that's the equivalent of high school level in the States or outside the Philippines. And for other airlines, right now, Pal Express will require you to be at least a college graduate to be able to apply for the position. So in my opinion, you need to have that study habits because during the flight, before the flight, and after the flight, there could be any time of the day there could be an officer, you know, uh, and representative of CAAP or a higher airline regulating body, which is not your company, but the boss of your company might come and check you and you have to be able to answer safety questions, security, security questions, dangerous good questions, procedure questions, or, or even service questions. So you have to be at least being able to familiar with how it is to study and memorize things and apply it to your situation. So it's an unnegotiable. So you kids who wants to be a flight attendant, stay in school. <laughs> All right. So some bonus qualities that I want to talk about on this video are the qualities that are desirable to have in a cabin crew aside from the non-negotiable that i have mentioned earlier with the shifts are the physical and the qualities you know that the recruiters will be definitely looking for for someone to require uh for someone to pass the recruitment what if a lot of you pass the recruitment so they will now go to the different other qualities that you might have that will make you stand out among the other applicants and these desirable qualities are I'm just going to run through them first thing i want to talk about is being responsible being a flight attendant you have to be a responsible professional to do it uh, you can't just ask for your co-crew or your office mate in the airline setting to take care of your responsibilities because you're too tired or you're too lazy to do it you know so you have to be uh, able to carry your weight in your team so another skill that is desirable for recruiters are understanding personality because again this is a service and a customer service field so you have to be able to understand the points of view of your customers um, the next thing is you need to have great speaking skills if you can notice if those of you who went on a flight flight attendants also do the announcements during the air during the the flight before during and after if they don't have an automatic announcement during emergency cases they still have to be the one to relay the information during uh, using the public address system or the PA system. So you have to be well-versed, you have to be well-spoken to be able to do that. 
And the next thing that they will be looking for is somebody with a positive outlook in life. Sometimes they will throw you questions that are negative in nature like tell me about your weakness or why do you want to leave your job? Why didn't you get the job when you applied before with us? So this is a test to see what is your outlook in life. Are you a negative person or a positive person? Because we all know negative people bring other people down. And the cabin crew recruitment it will take about the whole day. <laughs> 12 hours at least for you to finish it uh, there basically there's no choice and also they're testing on your patience and the next thing is they want to see the lifestyle sustainability they want to see if what kind of lifestyle you lead and is it sustainable to if you become a flight attendant with them if they ask you to fly all the way to let's say Dubai and live with them so they want to see if you are somebody who could you know make it in the life of a flight attendant uh, if you're a flight attendant you have to be you know outside of work you have to be independent you have to be able to uh, be responsible for yourself and be able to thrive uh, as a strong independent woman or man <laughs> because um, if you've lived a pampered life kind of it's gonna be hard because then once you're living on your own, you have to do your own laundry and things like that. So they're looking for people who are matured enough, who have enough experience in life that they see are suitable into a life-changing career. Okay, so that's all the things that I have for you guys for today. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, do give it a thumbs up and do check out my book, Ready for Takeoff. I do have other golden nuggets inside this book that is like really good for you if you are trying to apply for the flight attendant position it's only 549 in the philippines around 10 dollars if you are outside the philippines and all i talk about here is the eight proven steps that was that has helped me get my job as a flight attendant after eight years of trying so hopefully after reading this book you guys don't need to wait eight years for you to be able to <laughs> get a job as a flight attendant just make sure that you apply all the tips that is written here i do have a lot of freebies written uh, on on this book so check it out and yeah i will see you guys on the next video make sure that you like and subscribe this channel and watch out for the next video coming out next week bye